In this video, I'll be working through the question you see on the screen here from the paper one of the Ordinary Level Leaving Cert 2004. If you're looking for a different question from this paper, there should be a link to the playlist in the description below. Now, I'll be doing this on a whiteboard, hopefully just like you're used to your teacher doing in the classroom. But remember, this isn't the classroom, you're on YouTube, so take advantage of those tools pause the video, rewind, fast forward, or slow it down if I'm talking too fast. If you find this video useful or any of my other videos, I would appreciate a like or a subscribe. And what helps out the channel the most is sharing it with someone else who could be doing the Leaving Cert. In question two, the examiner draws this argon diagram for you, and it has three points on it. It has Z1 up here, Z2, and Z3. And then for this question, it simply asks you to write down the values of Z1, Z2, and Z3. It gives you three boxes. So Z1, what is Z1? Uh, first of all, let me write the wrong answer. Um, what a lot of students write is four, three. Most students are pretty good at reading uh, these diagrams at this stage. They read four and they read three. So some students write down four, three. You'll probably get half a mark, it's, it's wrong. It's not uh, in the form they want. They told you, in fact, to write A plus BI. Shouldn't look like this. It looks very similar though. It's four plus three I. That's how we write uh, complex numbers. Same with Z2, Z2 here. It's not zero, so let's put a line through this one. It's not zero, two, it's, it's sort of zero plus two i, uh, although we don't usually, you will get full marks for that. And it's not how I would write it though. I don't bother writing the zero. I would just write two i. These are the same. So that's the answer for Z2. And then Z3, uh, again, it's not, it's not this one. It's not uh, minus two, minus one. Remember, always take the x before the y. Same in this case, it's the real before the imaginary. And um, it's not this one. It's not minus two, minus one. It's minus two, minus one i. Again, I don't write it like that though. I actually write minus two, minus i. Don't bother put the, the one in. Um, although again, you'll get full marks for both of these, either of these. So that's, um, that's A part one. A part two then asks you to write down the value of, let's do it up here, the value of uh, Z2, the modulus value of Z2. So what does that mean? Uh, the clue here is these two lines, they, they look the same as the distance uh, when we write distance. So they're asking for the distance of Z2 from what? From zero from the zero point. So how far from here to here? That's all the answer. So you can just write two as the answer. It's quite straightforward to see that. There is a formula though, um, Z2. Here's Z2 down here. Um, the formula tells us, uh, let's see, the formula tells us it's the square root of the real part. So remember the real part here is zero. There's no real part. The real part here is zero. Zero squared plus the imaginary part, just the number, squared. And that's equal to zero plus four is four, and that's equal to two. But again, it was quite straightforward. If you know what the modulus means, it's just the distance from here to zero. This guy's hard, this is hard to see. What distance from there to zero? It's a triangle. That would be difficult, you would need to use the formula. This guy, the distance from here to zero, again, it's a triangle. You would need to use the formula. But this, it's just a straight line. That one's straightforward. In part B, they ask us to divide a complex number. 15 divided by one plus two i. Now, some students find these difficult, but what I will say is they're common. They're asked very regularly. You can do a hundred examples. They're in, they're in your book. And once you do, 10 examples, you should feel a lot happier at this. So if you are having trouble with dividing complex numbers, just do them, do 10 of them, do 20 of them, do 50 of them. You will become an expert very quickly. And um, there is extra written here. It says write V, uh, this is V, 
in the form of A plus BI, where A and B are elements of Z. Don't worry about any of that. Like, you sometimes will lose a mark by not worrying. All that means is the answer will come out to be whole numbers. Z, uh, elements of Z is just an integer. So it'll be just one, two, eight, minus 27, a whole number, no fractions, no decimal places. That's all, they're just telling you what the answer will look a little like. Doesn't matter, we can just go ahead and do this. So how do you divide a complex number? It's this bottom row is the trouble. The bottom rows are difficult. If only there was a way to get rid of this bottom row, to make it not be complex anymore. And there is. If we multiply this by one minus two i, that will fix a lot of things. This is called a complex conjugate. That will fix so much. Except we can't just cheat like that unless we fix it somehow. One minus two i up here. These two cancel, they destroy each other. It's just like multiplying by one. We haven't changed anything by doing this, but the bottom rows will become just easier to deal with. So how do we multiply fractions? Top by top, 15 times one is 15. 15 times minus two is minus 30 i. The bottom row, let's multiply it out. I'm telling you it's gonna come out easy. Uh, it's gonna come out uh, with no i's basically, but let, let's do it slowly. Uh, one times one is one. One times minus two, minus two i. Uh, two i times one is plus two i. And two i by minus two i is minus four i squared. Loads of i's. I said there'd be no i's and now there's loads of them. Let's see if they start disappearing. Top row is 15 minus 30 i. Bottom row, two i minus, plus two i, Sorry, 2i minus 2i, they, they cancel each other, zero. So there's some of the i stuff. This i, remember a lot of teachers always have up in the corner here, i squared equals minus one. Don't forget, there's i squared. It's just a minus one. It's just multiplied by a minus one. So that's a minus multiplied by a minus. That's just one plus four, sorry, plus four. So what does that become? That becomes 15 minus 30i over five. Look, the bottom row, instead of being messy, two numbers and one of them an i, it's, it's just become a single number. And they're easy to deal with. Dividing by a number just means dividing into everything here. This just means five divides into both of these guys. Five into 15 is three. Five into minus 30 is minus six i. And that's the answer. And they, they asked us for the answer to look like this. A plus B I, where A and B are just normal numbers. A is three and B is minus six. They're normal integers. Uh, so that's the answer to part B. In part C, they give us a diagram sort of like this. They have W on the diagram. They even tell us W is one plus two I. That's not really important to us here, but, but let me write it in. W is equal one plus two i. They ask us um, which of these other numbers, I haven't drawn any other dots up here, but they, they, they ask us to find a w, w with a line in it. This is the complex, complex conjugate of W. And they give us three options where it is. They're basically asking where is it? And they give us three options. They say, is it here, A, is it here, uh, so this is A, this is C, and this is B. Which of these is the complex conjugate? Um, so you could either know how to do this by the image, in which case the answer is C. Uh, complex conjugate is just a mirror through the real line. Um, or you could know how to do the complex conjugate of the number. And the complex conjugate is, is what we used earlier to divide. It's just, uh, it's just uh, the change the sign of the imaginary part. That's all the complex conjugate is. So where would this be? It would still be at the one, because the real never changed. So you see what I mean? The real line, the, the number on the real hasn't changed. These both have the same real part. And what has changed, this. This should be all the way down here somewhere. And uh, what has changed is this number. 
Instead of 2i, it's now minus 2i. So the, the answer is C for either of those reasons. And they ask you to give a reason. Um, I'd say this is enough. This is probably enough of a reason. In English, I'd write something like this. The sign of the imaginary part changes. Something like that. Really, you could write any of like 50 things. Your English doesn't have to be perfect. You don't even have to make full sense. Um, once you, once you get the answer to C, the examiner is just looking for something that, to tell, the, t tell them that you're not guessing. Something that tells them, okay, I think I, think I see what they were thinking. Um, change the sign would probably be enough. Um, the eye flips, the eye changes, like all these things the examiner would take. They just want the answer C and some sort of understanding of why it was C and not A and B. Okay, that's um, all of question two. If you have any follow-up questions, please put them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and have a great day.